the good gentleman from the 23rd District, Representative Hansen. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Later this year, we will celebrate the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's speech at the March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom. I wrote a book about that speech, so I wanted to share with you very briefly the story of how that speech came to be. When King arrived in Washington the night of August 27, he did not have a draft of what he would say the next day. So he got his aides together in the lobby of the Willard Hotel, and they started firing ideas at him. One wanted him to talk about jobs. Another wanted him to talk about housing discrimination. Finally, King said, my brothers, I understand. I appreciate all the suggestions. Now let me go and counsel with the Lord. So he went up to his suite at the Willard Hotel and spent the whole night writing out in longhand what he would say. At about four in the morning, he gave the speech to his secretary for typing and distribution to the press. That speech did not include the words, I have a dream. The Kings woke up the next morning to the disappointing news that the crowds at the march would be smaller than expected. About 25,000 people, the TV reporters were saying as the Kings left the hotel. And there were 25,000 people there mid-morning, and then 50,000, and then 100,000, and then 200,000, until finally, by the afternoon, 250,000 people had gathered at the Lincoln Memorial for a program of speeches and music. Kane was the last speaker of the day. He got that slot for two reasons. First, none of the other speakers wanted to go after Martin Luther King. <laughs> Second, some of the other civil rights leaders thought the early afternoon slots would give them a better chance of being on TV. By late in the afternoon, they thought the cameras would have to leave to process their film for the evening news. So none but the assembled marchers would remember the words of the day's final speaker. The program went on and on and people started to leave. Many of them had been up all night on buses or trains and they were ready to go home. Then Mahalia Jackson is introduced. She sings two spirituals, I've been buked and I've been scorned and how I got over. Kane is right behind her, he loves it. And they knew each other of course, they had appeared together earlier that year in June at a rally in Detroit where King talked about his visions for America with the words, I have a dream. So at the march, King is right behind her. He is clapping his hands on his knees, calling out to her, preacher urging the choir to sing. She finishes, and King is introduced, and the crowd just explodes. People are cheering and yelling. King tries to get them to quiet down, saying, thank you, thank you. They won't have it. They keep cheering. They're chanting his name over and over. Finally, King gets everyone to settle down and says, I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for human freedom in the history of our nation. And then he starts to read his speech. It's a good speech. He talks about the Emancipation Proclamation, how the protests of the summer of 1963 will continue until the bright day of justice emerges. He calls for nonviolence. And he's reaching the end and he gets to a line in his speech that none of you had ever heard. He was supposed to say, and so let us go back to our communities as members of the International Association for the Advancement of Creative Dissatisfaction. For some reason, Kane decided that did not strike the right note for the day. So he skips it. Behind him, Mahalia Jackson says, tell them about the dream, Martin. He says, go back to Mississippi, go back to Alabama, go back to the slums and ghettos of our northern cities, knowing that this nation can and will be saved. She says, tell them about the dream, Martin. And he looks down at his speech, and he looks up, and he says, I say to you today, my brothers and sisters, so even though we must face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream and he's off into the most famous lines in American history, a speech that he never intended to give, that many of the other civil rights leaders thought no one would ever remember. 
That's your five-minute history lesson for today. Thanks so much for listening.